Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the prelim fights for UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Covington versus Lawler. So without further ado, let's get to our first fight on the card. In our first fight, I'll be predicting on the prelim. So in our first fight, we have in the women's flyweight division, Miranda, I mean, I said Miranda, Miranda Grander versus Hannah Goldie. So looking at this fight, Hannah Goldie, I think she has some steam behind her. Then looking at her past fight, looked pretty decent. Then looking at her, um, what's it called? Contingent Series fight. I was like, the stuff I was looking forward to see for her in that fight, I, I didn't really see as much of it. Like, she wasn't as strong as I thought she would be. I didn't think she wasn't as good as at, like, walling and stalling or in that little clinch against the cage as I thought it would be. Her striking wasn't as clean as I thought it would be. But she found a way to win. So, all I'm saying is, Hannah Goldie did not impress me. And she showed a lot of weaknesses. Now, going against Miranda Granger, still haven't really seen her at the highest level tested, but looking at her record, she's for some good competition. She's been able to finish them pretty much the same level of competition as Goldie has faced. And, but she's been finishing that same level of competition, like, pretty much every time out. She's taller than Goldie. I think mean, um, Goldie is about five foot four, and Grandeur is about five foot seven. Giving her a three inch, I mean three inch height advantage. Then I think she has an eight inch reach advantage over Goldie. So Grandeur is gonna have a lot of reach advantages over Goldie. She has more finishing ability, and a lot of weakness I saw in Goldie were in the grappling area, and she kind of struggled a lot of times finding herself in bad positions in that contender series fight. So like some lack of urgency that time in that fight, but she managed to get grit out of victory. That really could have went the other way. It might say unanimous decision, but that fight could have easily went either way with, if, if certain things would have happened here and there. But right now, I'm, I'm more so this prediction will be more so because I'm not impressed by Hannah Goldie. She kind of disappointed me. So in this fight, I think Grandeur outgrapples her, controls her, and wins a gritty fight. So in this fight, I got Miranda Grandeur via decision. Now to our next fight we have in the welterweight division, Claudio Silva versus Cole Williams. So just to get to the point of this fight, Cole Williams is about 35, 36. Hasn't really done much in his career. He's 11 and 1. But not showing a whole lot for his skill. Well, his record might look decent, but his skills don't look all that great. Yeah, he really hasn't impressed me not with his career or nothing right now. Not to press opponents. Record looks decent. Age is kind of questionable being 35, 36 in the welterweight division and without having accomplished much of anything. And going against Claudio Silva, who was a solid grappler, solid tested MMA fighter. I think it's just too much. It's coming on short notice. Going against a well-rounded MMA fighter might not be that most phenomenal strike, like the most phenomenal striker, but he's gritty, he's grindy, he has solid jiu-jitsu and can submit just about anyone. That's not like no high-level BJJ black belt. You know, he can hold his own with a lot of people, and he's been proven to be some solid names. So, in this fight, I think Claudio Silva can beat him everywhere. I think more so he's going to gain respect on the feet, then quickly take him down and submit him. And I think it happens in the first round. So, in this fight, I got Claudio Silva via first-round submission. Now on to our next fight, we have in the women's flyweight division, Lauren Murphy versus Mara Romero Barella. So to get to the point of this fight, I think Barella's best areas are grappling, and Murphy is no slouch in the grappling area either. I think they're both air, they're of their best. I mean, they're, the best area for both women is the grappling area. Striking wise, Murphy might have to be a little bit better, but she's getting older. Her striking is starting to loosen up a bit. So I think, I mean, what's called Barella being the natural or Spending most of her career at flyweight will be the faster, more technical striker, despite Murphy being maybe a little bit more experienced in that area. I think the weight cutting and the the edge of being in the, the flyweight division longer and being more natural to that weight class without cutting is going to serve Barella well. Also, with the age factor, going to serve Barella well. I think it's going to be a close and gritty fight, but I think it's um the fact that Murphy is kind of on the downturn. She's getting older, not really getting any better, and Barella still showing room for improvement and. Murphy's been scared. I think she's like on a two or three fight losing streak. So usually stuff just start to streak and like, like losers start to stick together. It's usually nine times out of ten that pattern continues. And I think Barella, like I said, she just has more upside to her right now. The younger fighter, the fighter that's more natural to his weight class, still improving and all this stuff. I think mean, she's going to be able to grind out a decision over Murphy. It's going to be a competitive fight. But I think right now, Barella just has much more in her tank. So in this fight, it got Mar I mean, Mara Romero Barella via decision. Now to our next fight we have in the flyweight division, Jordan Espinosa versus Matt Chanel. So let's talk about Matt Chanel very quickly. Matt Chanel has had a weird career. I think at one point he was on some MTV show when he was real young. And he's still pretty young, actually. He has some solid strikes, some solid boxing, very underrated. Does have a very questionable chin, has some solid grappling, but he's a very, very talented fighter. His record might not show it as much, but he is on a three-fight win streak right now. He has some ups and downs, but now he's finally streaking. He's a very solid fighter. He can pull off the upset, very much pull off the upset in this fight. 
I think both men in this fight got and got questionable chance. Mashinelle has been finished a couple times from weird shots. And I seen Jordan Espinosa get dropped on the contender series fighting like once, if not twice. He kind of had weird striking defense, but he is explosive. Jordan Espinosa is very explosive, very solid wrestling, very physical, good power. He's a solid fighter. He showed a lot of improvements in his last fight against Eric Shelton. Like, he came out there, Eric Shelton was such a solid striker, such a solid grappler. He was able to scramble with him, was able to take him down a couple of times, was able to, matter of fact, I'll strike um, him in that fight. Just maybe not all for, like, skill. Well, you gotta, gotta give respect. It's not just like, oh, he got lucky. It was his skill that allowed him to outstrike Eric Shelton for most of that fight. Maybe Shelton didn't capitalize on some areas, but still, that he outstruck him. So, he showed that improvement in striking, and that shows how he can be. I worry about his gas tank, but he showed, matter of fact, he showed a good gas tank in that fight, too. So, really, I'm just leaning to Espinosa, like, I think a lot of the holes that I saw, like the areas I saw were weak in his contender series fight, he improved upon them in just a very short time from his contender series fight to his UFC debut. He improved on like not backing up straight as much. He still made that um, mistake a couple times, but he improved on it a lot. Um, his cardio didn't show any true issues in that fight, and he just blended his skills together very well. I think if he fights a clean f- fight. I think he should beat Mashinelle. He will be the better wrestler. He'll be the more athletic, more explosive fighter and be able to take the fight where he needs to take it. I don't know how he'll deal with the submission game, but I think he'll be able to handle it pretty well. But I think Mashinelle can definitely give him some issues and some worry on the ground with his submissions. But I think it's going to be more so the explosiveness of, and physicality of Espinosa. Be able to get shots when he needs to take it down and get some control. Be able to land shots and get out of the way of counter strikes with Chanel. But I think Matt Chanel will be, will be game and make him fight. But I think those big explosive activities of Espinosa getting a takedown, landing those big explosive shots will favor more more so on the judges scorecards. So in this fight I got Jordan Espinosa via decision. Now onto our cold prelim headliner we have in the women's flyweight division, Antonina Shevchenko versus Lucy Pudilova. So Shevchenko's coming off a disappointing loss. Lucy Pudilova is coming off a loss that she lost, but in a way I, I picked her to win that fight. And looking at the fight you could kind of give it to her in a way, but then again it already happened so you can't take it away. But Put a level look all right against Liz Carmouche. I like how she was just stuck on the ground a lot of times in that fight. But on the feet, she did get some offense off. And I don't think um, Carmouche really landed too much on the feet. Like, she was just looking for a takedown. She kind of struggled at times to get those get those takedowns. And Lucy Putalova, as a matter of fact, was offensive off her back at times. Was able to uh, land some good strikes on the feet. I think she did the more physical damage, whereas Car- Carmouche was more controlled. But that's besides the point. She lost. So looking at this fight... Lucy Pulova, obviously, in her career hasn't really shown, too, as far as her UFC career, hasn't got a single takedown yet. Hasn't shown much offensive grappling at all. And then she's going against Antonia Shevchenko, who really hasn't shown much um, grappling in her career, or much solid grappling in her career. So I think this fight, it might be a chance for one of these fighters to try to slip in and work on a grappling to get a victory out of this fight. Or it might go out down to a fight where they say, oh, we're both strikers, so we're going to strike. And I'm going to see it more so being that type of play out where somebody, they're going to try to strike and see who's the better striker. Maybe a little bit of mixing and grappling. But with neither of them really having much success, I don't think it's going to change too much in this fight. Might be a takedown here or there that might take a round. But I think it's more so going to play on the feet. And Shevchenko is just a much more decorated, much more skilled striker. I think she just kind of takes Pudilova to school and show her a whole new level to striking. I think it's going to be competitive. Pudilova is a, a grindy. I mean, not grind. She's a warrior, so she's going to make it a fight. But the more, the more technical fighter is going to win that fight. I don't think Pudilova really has no power or nothing to change anything. So it's going to be more of a who can land the cleaner strikes, who can land the crisper strikes, who can control the pace. And that's going to go to Shevchenko all the way. So in this fight, I got Antonina Shevchenko via decision. Now onto our prelim headliner we have in the welterweight division, Mickey Gall versus Salim Tohari. So looking at Salim Tohari, I think he came to UFC for, the, um, what's his name? I'm forgetting the guy's name. Warley Alve- Alvarez or is Alves, something like that. Yeah, Warley Alvarez, solid fighter right there. Gave him a pretty tough outing, but he still lost that fight unanimously. And he fought Kita Nakamura and lost that fight via split. Got dropped in that fight. I think that fight was on the feet the most of the time in that fight. And he got outstruck basically by a grappler. Kita Nakamura does have some, is a well-rounded fighter, does have some striking, does have some power. But he more so falls into the grappler's um, part. I mean, he, he, he fought more so falls into the grappler category, what I'm trying to say. Then you got Mickey Gall coming off a loss to Diego Sanchez. But he might have had some pre-existing injury going into that fight. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt in this fight. say that was a pre-existing injury. And more so what happened in that fight was that Diego Sanchez was the veteran. And he was a solid grappler. So he can break Mickey Gall in that area. And that's what he did. But I don't see Salim Tohari breaking Mickey Gall in the grappling. I do see him being gritty and grindy. He's a tough guy. He hasn't been an easy out for anybody he's fought yet. 
and seeing him being a more much more well-rounded fighter than Mickey Gall. But I think Mickey Gall, being more of a specialist, has a huge area of advantage over Tahari, where Tahari don't only have a huge advantage over Mickey Gall. Tahari's striking is nice, but I think Mickey Gall has been working on striking, despite what it looked like in the Diego Sanchez fight. I think he certainly has shown leaps and bounds in his striking. I think he'll show you more in this fight because he's taken some quite a bit of time out. So I think that's what he's working on, work on getting back to healthy. And what I'm going to kind of draw to why, who I'm going to pick, I'm leaning to Mickey Gall, mainly because I see in Salim Tahari's debut, he gave up two takedowns to Worley Alves. And I'm not saying Worley Alves has bad wrestling or bad takedown offense. I'm just saying that that's not really his thing. And for you to give up takedowns to Salim I mean to Worley Alves, that's not a good sign. Especially going against a high-level grappler like Mickey Gall. And Mickey Gall might not be the most phenomenal takedown artist, but he does have a lot of tricks to get you down. Like a lot of tricks, a lot of trips, a lot of little sneaky little ways to get you to the fight to the ground. And I think Mickey Gall can find some of those avenues in this fight. I think despite Mickey Gall being looking bad on the feet at times, I think the biggest gap between these two is in the grappling. I think if Mickey Gall gets to the ground, he can have a lot of success, a lot of control. And I think he can either grind him to decision or get a submission. I think it's going to be a submission. I think the first round is going to be a little bit awkward and stuff. And once Mickey Gall starts to find his way in the clinch and find his way to get set up some takedowns and secures the takedown, I think going to start to shift more to Mickey Gall. I think he starts to break him down on the feet, I mean on the ground. And I think in the second round, he's able to submit him. So in this fight, I got Mickey Gall via second round submission. And that concludes my predictions for the prelims of UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Covington versus Lawler. And as always, thanks for watching.